Welcome in to the TGI Friday, July 14th Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller, thank you for riding along with us for another week. And we made it through. <laughs> it was, oh, of course we did. I do have my eye on the future, though. That's kind of the theme that I'd like to talk about. Really quiet weekend. Even Ray Merriman's quiet. He's not going to be around because they're doing a webinar on Sunday. So this will be it for the weekend. And all we have is the moon moving into Cancer on Saturday as far as the weekend goes. So that's it. But not so fast, because we do have the sun sextiling Uranus this evening. It happens at 7.02 p.m. Eastern, but we mentioned this yesterday. Now, financial astrologers, you know, have kind of gotten on point with this, because obviously when you're talking about Uranus in the money sign of Taurus, aspected by any significant planet, and certainly the sun is, then we're talking about something potentially tangible. Okay, that's for financial astrologers. What about me? <laughs> Let's talk about me. Well, obviously, you know, this is a sextile. So this is a, let's say, playfully favorable aspect. So come on, you can pull the sheets back and peek through the covers. It's going to be okay. Now, we'll be applying or moving toward this aspect all day. And around in these parts where I have my chart set that Uranus is in the fifth house and the sun is in the seventh house. Hmm. Wonder about relationships. And that could be of any kind, even one with your children, fifth house. And don't box relationship into domestic kind of relationship or partner, romantic relationship. A relationship is any kind of relationship where there is some form of commitment. So in other words, an employee-employer is a relationship. A landlord-tenant is a relationship. And parent-child and, of course, the most important relationship of them all, you've heard us say it several times, with your own self. That's right. So if something surprising happens over the next several days, just consider it something welcome that the universe is trying to work with you for your highest good. Claim it. Amen. You know, another thing it could obviously point to related to sextile with the sun and Uranus is just more realized independence. Like this awareness that you do have a good relationship with yourself. You can be autonomous. You can stand on your own two feet. You don't owe explanations to other people. And that's okay. Thank you again, and amen. And if your portfolio happens to smile and wink at you along the way, well, then that's just an added bonus, I guess. Now, let's talk about, for the rest of our time together, what's coming up. What's over the hill? I was out walking the other night, and I was just very untypical for me to do this during a walk, because usually that's very guarded time, but I was looking at some stuff on social media, and I was just led to, and I know why now. But several of the comments were just about all this cray cray that's going on in the world right now we had some posts in our facebook group page the subconscious mind mastery and fun astrology listeners group on facebook it's a private group love to have you in there if you're not already just join by answering the questions but some conversation around this as well so where are we now where are we headed as we look over the hill, I updated the retrograde and eclipse link that's at the top of the funastrology.com website. I am going to mention a couple of these, but would be better for you to just go look at it and study it and absorb it for yourself, because throwing these dates around gets old after about mm, three seconds. But we do have three planets already, three big outers that are in retrograde already, Pluto, Saturn, and Neptune, right? So that's already taken care of. Venus is next. That happens in about a couple of weeks. Chiron on the same day. It's actually on the 23rd. Then in August, Mercury. And the one that I was thinking about today relative to this, Uranus, August 29th, all the way to January 27th. Then Jupiter goes retrograde on September 4th. I think that's another date that we need to lock in. Early September, Jupiter slows down. So that forward progress that you've been used to from September, October, November, December, going to slow down. So anything you want to start that you will then spend time building during those four months, well, that would be early September. And the one that raised my eyebrow was Mercury's December retrograde. We had had this on the website, but it just, you know, as you start to get closer to it, you think, hmm, in context, Mercury will be in retrograde as we cross into the new year. And remember that midnight, wherever you are, January 1st chart is the marker basically the natal chart of 2024, and it's going to have Mercury in retrograde. 
Then that led me to review again the eclipses that are coming up. We have an annular solar eclipse on October 14th. That will be in Libra. Then two weeks later, on Saturday the 28th, we have a lunar partial eclipse in Taurus. What I was seeing on social media were a lot of just predictions about stuff getting weird and all that. Look, we've had eclipses broadly four times every year for our whole lives. <laughs> we're still here. So let's not get carried away. They are turbocharged new moons and full moons. The most direct, obvious correlation that I've seen is the argument that financial astrologers use that they can have an effect on a company's stock price. But that's getting very granular. And that's talking about items, entities, not human beings with souls and choice and free will. At least not in the same sense. You know what I'm talking about. Don't get so technical on me now. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to say humans versus entities. Big difference. So let's circle back. Why this heavy energy from this week? Well, we talked about it. That's why I love doing this daily podcast, because we look one eye out at the world and see what's going on out there. And then we look through the other eye at the chart and we put the two together. We saw this week a big heavy yod. Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, Mars, and Venus really all involved in one way or another in this yod. Does our soul feel that? <laughs> You'd better believe it. And we talked about the nodes of the moon sitting at zero degrees and Pluto sitting at zero degrees. Two trigger planets, not insignificant ones. Mercury and Mars were at two degrees at the beginning of the week. They've moved off of those points now, but they were there earlier. So I would say if you've been feeling the wonk this week, don't fret. That's actually a good thing because it means that you are in tune with these energies. That should motivate you to study astrology. We have two great courses. If you're not uh, to the level of proficiency that you'd like to be, we have the 101 course. And then we have Robert Glasscock's Horary course. And those are both on the funastrology.com website. I would encourage you, if you were feeling the wonk and didn't know why, get in one of those courses because you need to learn how to do this so that you can look at the chart and go, ah, okay, and then make choices accordingly of how you're going to anticipate and work with that energy. I hope that helps. And I love you so much. Have a great weekend. Going to take it off. I'll see you back on Monday. <laughs>